Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Horat Drak and we are playing Fallout 4 as the Pacifist. Now I have managed to not spoil myself with any news, I basically avoided any information to Fallout 4 except for the release date, so I'm unspoiled. Let's have a look. War. War never changes. In the year 1945, my great-great-grandfather, serving in the army, wondered when he'd get to go home to his wife and the son he'd never seen. He got his wish when the U.S. ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The world awaited Armageddon. Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. People enjoyed luxuries once thought the realm of science fiction. Domestic robots, fusion-powered cars, portable computers. But then, in the 21st century, people awoke from the American dream. Years of consumption led to shortages of every major resource. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. It is now the year 2077. We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. For myself. For my wife. For my infant son. Because if my time in the army taught me one thing, it's that war, war never changes. This is the signature sentence of the Fallout series, war never changes. Changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the veterans hall tonight, hon. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. So, yeah, I said I was completely unspoiled. Now I had to I had to get in here and do some some sound testing, so the sound is alright. And I also um, tried to make myself acquainted with the um, with the editor here just so that we don't take all day trying to create a face that really fits. So yeah, I'm going to going through this. I have basically looked at what I want and this is what we're going to do because otherwise you can take hours and hours in here. We're going to take the Ronin. Did you get a haircut yesterday? The Ronin haircut. It's cute. We have this little knot at our back, that's uh, fine and dandy. And then we're going to do some facial hair. I looked looked ages for that facial hair option. I think we're going with a goatee. What do you think, uh, hon? Beard or no beard? Yep. She isn't going to say anything. Interesting. All right. Not interested in in having a say if if a man has a face or not. And um, what are we going to do? I wanted to sculpt the chin a bit, although now the beard is in the way. Um, so let me take away the beard for once. 
Yeah, give him, give him the beast. Very manly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks looks a lot like a porn star. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I if I said this already. We're going to attempt a pacifist um, playthrough. I will resort to violence only as a absolutely last option because I basically don't want to kill and murderize everyone. This character has for some reason decided that um, it's just... Uh, he's just finished with violence basically. He's just... he's had it all and he doesn't want it anymore. All the violence and the murderizing. So we... Um, that doesn't mean he's going to let him uh, let himself be killed. So as a last resort we might revert to violence but only as an absolutely last resort. So I'm going to accept this. What do you think, I'm roguishly handsome or handsomely roguish? So I want to do the um, facial hair again. I Yeah, I like the goatee and I would also like the um, Gettysburg. Mm, beard. Okay. I like it. Um, don't know what you think. I think it fits relatively well. Frames the face. Um, works with the Ronin hair. I think we're going to take this one. I uh, originally intended to go with the uh, goatee. This looks a bit better though. A bit like my own beard. Um, then go to the oh, the neck type. Doesn't interest us. So let's go back and let's um, look at the body. So our guy can change between large, thin and muscular in this little triangle. We're going to make him muscular and thin, I guess. Not so muscular, it was just not very logical for a pacifistic person. Although, uh, no, you can be muscular and pacifist. Um, Seems like he was an army veteran, assuming he was the guy who talked in the intro. That's what's suggested, so he could be muscular enough. Let's do this. Yeah, I like it. I like it very much. And we're done. Um, yeah, confirm the character. I'm not sure if there's a, a button to go out of your body. Let's have a look in the settings. Uh, controls. Strive, attack, block, bash, activate. Toggle, POV, or the workshop. So that could be it. Yeah, that's it. So we can now look at our look at our guy. Although it's one of these weird games where on the side of your character, I hate that. Oh, we're going to play first person. This seems to be our house. I'd expect it to start in a vault, but it seems we are here in a somewhat idyllic 1950s suburb. Although it's, it's 2077, I think you said. Camera. We really need to get those vacation photos developed. Yeah, you really need to. Can turn off the radio. Turn it back on. Ah, broken again. Good old USA. The uh, flag seems to have changed a bit. It's one star above the others. So that doesn't really seem to fit. Wonder how many states there are left. War never changes. <laughs> Got that right. Right. No need to get dressed twice. The, uh, yeah. I'm going to close this. There's nothing interesting in here. It seems. We have this thing. I would like to take the hammer. That is always handy. I'm going to close the cupboard though. Hey, yeah. Hello. Hey, buddy. Sean. He's just lying there. Shall we push his, his mobile?
fun. I like that these look like the um, spaceship from Futurama. They're nearly the exact shape. Here's a heater. Some towers, I guess, for the baby. Come on, let's look what is in here. Ooh! Blast radius! Use quick reaction and skill to get to a safe distance. An exciting new board game that brings friends, family and nuclear explosions together. The first player to make it to a safe distance will survive. The rest will perish. Do you have what it takes? From Don't Be Board Games Company. <laughs> That's a really funny idea. I like that. There's a teddy bear. How'd you get on the floor, Mr. Bear? Yeah, that's what I want. And he's look, lying suspiciously in the middle of this thing. Maybe this bear is trying to take over world domination. I wonder what Sean will grow up to be. Yeah, this um, special acronym um, stands for the attributes that you can have in the Fallout series. Or at least it was. I don't know how it is handled in Fallout 4. S is strength, P is perception. Um, wonder what E was. The I is intelligence. A is agility. Um, C is constitution. I wonder what E is. Um. And we'll we'll learn it soon enough. Each of these things stands for one, one thing. I'll, I'll just blurt it out when I remember it. I can sit in here. Wonder if I should, but I I can, if I want to. Yeah, sitting in there with our Ronin haircut. First person all the way. <laughs> to think. One day he's gonna learn how to drive. Yeah. Oh, what is this wallpaper? An ape on a rocket. Fun. Can't wait to teach him to ride this. <laughs> the glove's a little big right now, but Sean will grow into it. Should get this signed next time we're at the park. Uh, we might. <laughs> He'll either be great at spelling or great at smashing blocks together. <laughs> All right, I think think we've seen everything. Oh, hey! Ah, good morning, sir. Your coffee. One hundred and seventy-three point five degree Fahrenheit. Rule to perfection. You have three and three eyes. Just delivered. I like how the eyes are. Uh, Staying on me as I move around him. It's called Codsworth. Cheers. Codsworth. Enjoy your coffee, sir. Oh. Thank you. Gonna drink some of the coffee. What are you doing? He's doing dishes. Or oh, it is doing the dishes. I think it's a he. Hey, Codsworth. Don't worry about the dishes. That's my job. Sounds like someone made a sticky. I shall attend to young Sean. <laughs> All right. You know, I was nervous at first, but Codsworth's really good with Sean. We should take Codsworth to be service soon, don't you think? Yeah, perhaps. Newspaper. Mm. More the same. The Boston Bugle. What's this? Bourbon. It's a little early to be drinking. Now, who left those here? Yeah, the appliances are definitely futuristic. Wonder if they have an atom atom uh, reactor in there just to use this thing. I think that's the that's the idea behind all this. Can drink from this. Can you get that? <laughs> it's probably that like so small drinks so much. This is a bread machine or a, a bread basket, something like that. Do we have here? It's a refrigerator with Nuka Cola. Nuka Cola, ice cold. Looks like the milk got delivered. Saddle up Salisbury steak, graded A plus. Mhm. Mm and we have sugar bombs. 
Sugar bombs. 100% daily value of sugar. Alright. Now some person at the door. No, you go. You go, honey. I have I have fed a fish to fry. Let's look what is in here. Insta mash. Fancy lad snack cakes. Blamco mac and cheese. Expires in never. Alright. That's probably good. And this is the box no, in, in in which um, he must have come, the uh, Cotsworth robot, Mr. Handy, incredible multi talented Mr. Handy. Um, it says does not come with a coffee mug because there's a coffee mug on here. Here's the fuel. That's especially funny. What's on this side? Bring Mr. Handy to your home. Mr. Handy expertly performs many duties such as accounting, cleaning, comforting, cooking, childcare, entertaining, elderly care, grocery delivery, grooming, haircutting, make-up application, marital advice. <laughs> because you should take marital advice from a robot. Pet care, pet grooming, personal assistance and many more. There's no task too big for Mr. Handy to handle. I can't read the small stuff down here. I cannot duck at least I haven't found anything are you gonna get the door no um, you get the door why do I have to do everything no no I'm going to ignore you what's this all right what's this a hollow tape recorder player yeah right mate I'll answer the door. Couldn't you do it? Can you get the door? Whenever I answer, he just asks for you over and over. All right then. Let's have one more look. Law diploma. That must be my wife's then. So she's a law doctor. Very nice. Yeah. Who are you? Good morning. Voltec calling. Um. Yeah, what is it? What, what is Vortech? Vortech? Remind me again? Why, we're about you, sir, and helping secure your future. You see, Vortech is the foremost builder of state of the art underground fallout shelters. Vaults, if you will. Luxury accommodations where you can wait out the horrors of nuclear devastation. You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. Urgency? What's so important? Why, nothing less than your entire future. If you haven't noticed, sir, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. If you'll excuse my language, the big kaboom is... It's inevitable, I'm afraid, and coming sooner than you may think, if you catch my meaning. Now, I know you're a busy fellow, so I won't take up much of your time, time being a, uh, mm -hmm, a precious commodity. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault 111. Um. Is there enough space? But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Don't want there to be any holdups in the unforeseen event of <laughs> total atomic annihilation. <laughs> take but a moment. <sighs> Tell me Tell more. Me more about this vault. Oh, it has all the amenities of the modern home, I assure you. Not to mention total protection from nuclear radiation and hostile mutants. A better future underground. It's not only our mission, it's our passion. All right. Should I be sarcastic? No, I can't wait for the world to end. <laughs> That's the spirit. Now, let's see. 
Oh yeah, so this is the... Um, oh yeah, E was endurance. Very interesting. So we name ourselves... Um, Urist, the Urist, the pacifist. That's our name. Now, what do we need? Urist, the pacifist is fine. Now, strength. Oh, L was luck. I forgot that. Strength. Strength is a measure of your raw physical power. It affects how much you can carry and the damage of all melee attacks. Perception is your environmental awareness and sixth sense and affects weapon accuracy in VATS. Endurance is a measure of your overall physical fitness. It affects your total health and the action point drain from sprinting. Charisma is your ability to charm and convince others. It affects your success to persuade in dialogue and prices when you barter. Intelligence is a measure of your overall mental acuity and affects the number of experience points earned. That's interesting. Agility is a measure of your f overall finesse and reflexes. It affects the number of action points in vets and your ability to sneak. And luck is a measure of your general good fortune and affects the recharge rate of critical hits. I wonder if I do get more of these, but um, basically what I want to do, I can can only spend 10 points. So I want to be very charismatic, very intelligent, and yeah, I guess pretty agile. I think that's what I want. The other things, yeah, I don't really need strength because I won't Hopefully you won't have to fight. Perception, that might be pretty useful. Endurance, nah, we don't need that. And luck, yeah, I don't know. Recharge rate of critical hits, that's nothing I really need. Yeah, it's a problem having never played it to know how these things are affected. I wonder how you differentiate perception and intelligence. We're gonna roll with this and accept any problems we might get. So it's fine, I guess. Mm, Urus the pacifist. Yeah, it's it's fine. Nobody's gonna ask my name. Except. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um. Thanks again. Hey, Cheers, man. It's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. I have my moments. All right, so we're going to end this episode here. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give me a like. If you didn't, please tell me why in the comments. And if you want to see more of this series or my other content in the future, please consider subscribing. I hope you join me next time. Thanks and bye-bye.